dear students, welcome back to our lesson for the fourth quarter. We will continue with lesson three, which is on organizing data using frequency distribution table or FDT. By the way, this is Mary Jane C. Palara, your math teacher. Before we start with a discussion, let me check if you can still recall our previous lesson on data collection. For our review, I want you to determine whether the given is a numerical data or a categorical data. If you think it is numerical, you just have to type ND in the comment section or you may write it on your paper. On the other hand, if it is categorical data, you just have to write or type CD. I hope that the instruction is clear to you as I give you 10 seconds to do the activity. All right, so with that, I hope that you were able to recall what numerical data and categorical data is. Numerical data have numeric uh, have numeric values on the other hand categorical data have non-numeric values so for example in number one height is a numerical data because height can be expressed as 1.67 meters or 152 centimeters but as long as you can express it in numbers on the other hand Number two is a categorical data because our colors cannot be expressed as numbers. Colors can be red, orange, yellow, green, and so on. Number three is a numerical data because age can be expressed as 11, 12, 20, 50, and so on. Number four, cell phone brand is also a categorical data because we cannot express it as numbers so cell phone brands can either be apple oppo samsung and so on number five salary is a numerical data because salaries are expressed as numbers so i hope that you got five over five in that review so as a continuation of our lesson it says there after a sample has been chosen and data were collected, the data obtained is actually unorganized. Before we can draw conclusions from them, it must be first summarized and represented in a way that it is easy to visualize and understand. That's why we are having this topic today on frequency distribution table, because it is a way of organizing the data that we have gathered. First, we have here a question. What is a frequency table? Let us first define the word frequency. The frequency of a particular data value is the number of times the data value occurs. For example, the following is a list of shoe sizes of 35 boys. Here is the list. Now, as you can see in the list of shoe sizes, those boys who have a, a shoe size of two are only two. I, it means that only two boys have a shoe size of two based on the list given. So that is the frequency of shoe size two. Next, seven. Let us count how many sevens are there. So we have one, two, and three. It means that the frequency of shoe size seven is three. And for the last one, how about the frequency of shoe size four? So let us count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine that means that 
9 is the frequency of 4 because it appeared 9 times in our list. I hope that with that, you were able to understand what is frequency. This time, let us define frequency table as a whole. A frequency table is a table that lists items and uses tally marks to record and show the number of times data values and it is composed of three columns. Again, it is a table that lists items and uses tally marks to record and show the number of times data values appear. Data values appear and it is composed of three columns. So here are the three columns. The first column shows the class interval, the second column shows the tally, and the last column or the third column shows the frequency. So those are the three parts, class interval, tally, and frequency. So this time, let us learn how to organize data using frequency table. A frequency table is constructed by arranging collected data values in ascending order of magnitude with their corresponding frequencies. The data values are then grouped in intervals, for example, from 0 to 5, 5 to 10, and so on. Following a rule for boundary values, frequency counts are noted for each interval. In this example, the intervals are 1 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 9, and 10 to 12. So let us try to construct a frequency table using this data. For step 1, in the first column, we write down the class intervals given. So in this case, the class intervals are 1 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 9, and 10 to 12. This time, let's continue to step 2. For step 2, in the second column from the given list above, we count the number of observations falling within each class interval and put strokes. Here is our table. So our first column is complete with the class intervals on it. So 1 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 9, and 10 to 12. All we have to do now is to tally. So to tally, we just have to look at the data and then put a stroke on the interval it belongs to. In this example, 7 our first data is 7. It falls in the class interval 7 to 9, so we put one stroke. 10 falls in the class interval 10 to 12, so that is another one stroke for that interval. 4, 4, 6, 5, and 4 all falls in the class interval 4 to 6, so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 strokes, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's continue with the second line. So 8 here falls in the class interval 7 to 9, so that is 1 stroke, 5, 5, and 4. All belongs to the class interval 4 to 6, so that is 3 marks. 1, 2, 3. Next, 3 falls under or belongs to the class interval 1 to 3, so that is 1 stroke. And then 10, we have 1 stroke for 10 to 12, 6 belongs here and then five also belongs to that interval and so on so you continue doing that and when you do that we will have this result when we are finished putting strokes in each class interval so this is the result 
Okay, so that is how it looks like for the tally. We can now proceed to step three. For step three, after tallying, we count the tally marks in each row and put the number in the last column. This is now called the frequency table. So what we have to do is to just find the total of the tally marks for this, uh, for the class interval one to three, that is, that has a total of five. So we write five for the class interval four to six, that is five, 10, 15, 20, and 21. So we write there in the frequency 21. Seven to nine has six tally marks. So we put there six. And then for 10 to 12, it has three. Frequency of three. So that is our frequency table. Once again, here is our frequency distribution table. So we just put there the total. When we add all of the frequency, 5 plus 21 plus 6 plus 3, the total is 35. And we now have our frequency table for the list of shoe sizes of the 35 boys. Note, we have here a note that the total number of frequencies is the total number of data given. So 35, if for instance, you are answering a problem or I asked you to construct a frequency table and the total does not sum up to the number of data, it means that you are missing or you did not, you missed some um, data or you did not uh, include it in your tallying. So you have to recheck and reconstruct uh, your table. Here is uh, example number two. Uh, for example number two, we have here the scores of 30 students in a math quiz. We have 86, 83, and so on. So there are 30 scores since there are 30 students. The class interval is already given. So we have from 71 to 75, 76 to 80, 81 to 85, 86 to 90, 91 to 95, and 96 to 100. So the class interval is already there. So we are done with column one. You just have to tally the scores or yes, the scores. So 86, let's mark where does 86 fall it falls under this class interval so we put one mark 83 is between 81 to 85 81 belongs to the interval 81 to 85 the same with this one and then 80 belongs to this um, interval 87 belongs to the class interval 86 to 90. 94 belongs to the interval 91 to 95. 91 also belongs to that interval. 82 belongs to the interval 81 to 85. 76 belongs to the interval 76 to 80. 87 belongs to this 87 belongs to the interval 86 to 90 and then 80 belongs to this interval 72 in this interval and after we are done with that we will have this result after tallying all the scores so this is the result We can now proceed to step three, which is counting the frequency of for each interval. For uh, the class interval 71 to 75, the frequency is four. For 76 to 80, that is also four. For 81 to 85, the frequency is 12. 
86 to 90, the frequency is 6. 91 to 95, the frequency is 3. And 96 to 100, the frequency is 1. And the total, when we add all of those, is 30. So that is equal to the number of um, data that we have gathered. It means that it is complete. So this is our frequency table for example number two. I hope that you were able to follow with our examples. Let us just have a quick recall of what we have learned. A frequency table is a table that lists items and uses tally marks to record and show the number of times data values appear and it is composed of three columns. There are steps that we follow in constructing a frequency distribution table. Step one, in the first column, we write down the class intervals given. For step two, in the second column, from the given list, we count the number of observations falling within each class interval and put strokes on it. For step three, after we tally, we count the tally marks in each row and put the number in the last column. We are now done with our frequency table. With that, um, I want to invite you to watch our next video, which is on types of graph. So that is the coverage for quarter four, lesson four. Thank you so much for listening. Once again, this is teacher Mary Jane Cipalara. Until next time, bye.